Uh, this is a video on thermoregulation, and at first we'll talk about endothermy. And, an endothermic organism is one that is mainly heated by the warmth generated through metabolism. An endotherm is commonly known as a warm-blooded animal. Endotherms are able to adjust heat production through thermogenesis in order to match the varying rates of heat loss in the organism. Thermogenesis may be increased by muscle activity such as shivering or moving. For some mammals, select hormones are able to increase the metabolic act activity in mitochondria and rather than producing ATP, the mitochondria may produce heat. This is called non-shivering thermogenesis. And brown fat or brown adipose tissue in necks and shoulders are specialized in the rapid heat production. An example of shivering uh, thermogenesis is in the chickadees. Um, the chickadee right here, um, so basically uh, the shivering that the chickadee um, acts out, it assists chickadees in remaining active and maintaining a body temperature of 40 degrees Celsius even though it only weighs 20 grams and lives in negative 40 degrees Celsius environments. Contrastingly, some mammals, such as human infants, right here, um, have brown fat. It's that part right there and that part right there. And um, brown fat or brown adipose tissue, and it helps in producing heat for the infant. And evidence that supports this is the fact that when the environment is colder, uh, the amount of brown fat present is significantly larger. There's the ectotherm, and in ectothermy, um, the ectothermic organism is one that is uh, gaining its heat and warmth from an external source, unlike endothermic organisms. An ectotherm is commonly known as a cold-blooded animal. All amphibians and a majority of rep reptiles are ectothermic. Organisms such as these such, uh, may regulate their body temperature through their behavior. For example, um, when it is cold, ectotherms will seek warm areas and adjust their bodies toward the heat source in order to maximize their absorbency of heat. And also to help in this heat gain process, they may also expand the area in which their bodies are exposed to heat so they can uh, absorb a lot more heat. And contrastingly, in cold areas, they will seek warm environments. And an example of ectothermy is in lizards. Um, lizards, this animal right here, on cold days, it may bask itself in the sun, like like right here, and it will gain heat from the sun, and it's an external heat source, and that's what they require. And for example, in uh, frogs right here, if they want to become warm, they might want to bask in uh, warm temperature water, because basically all ectotherms uh, mostly depend on an external source for their heat.